The more things change, the more they stay the same. Visit your local Subaru dealer. Hi, I'm Mr. Wallpaper Man of Lieberman Interiors, back with incredible news. All my in-stock wall coverings are now 40 to 50 percent off the book price. They're our most popular wall coverings, and you can take them home today. Or, if you've already found a favorite book pattern, I'll order it for you at up to 33 percent off. I have two locations to serve you, Richfield and St. Louis Park. Now, with prices like these, why go anywhere else? Last time I was with a Bronco, too, I made two predictions. Number one, the Vikings would beat New Orleans. And number two, it'd be a lot of snow. Well, here's another prediction. More snow. But if you have a Bronco, too, more fun. So why not buy this beautiful Bronco, too, right now at only $229 a month, no payments to June of 1988. Hey, enjoy the snow. So for the lowest payments ever, call Southdale Ford Eagle right now at 835-5555. You're watching KSTP-TV, Minnesota's News Channel 5. Live from Minnesota's News Channel, KSTP Channel 5, Mike Bink. This is ABC on the update, we'll tap into Super Bowl anticipation as football fans stock up for a good match in San Diego tomorrow. A Minnesota delegation heads for Norway. They're making plans for a world-class ski jump in Bloomington. And Arizona Governor Evan Meekham reveals his decision in a letter. Will he fight to keep his job or resign in the face of impeachment? I'm Jason Davis, and we'll have the story of some very special skaters when we go on the road again to St. Cloud. We have a variety of weather across the upper Midwest, and that fog still as thick as pea soup. I'll have the details. In sports, I've got good gopher news and bad gopher news, and I bet you can guess which teams did what. Those stories, and we'll have highlights of winter carnival festivities in St. Paul next on the Eyewitness News Update. Remember, remember, remember when a drive-in was a buck, a hot dog was a dime, and cars were under $10,000? Now the movie's six bucks. A hot dog's $1.75. And cars. Well, Subaru still has a line of cars for under $10,000. Stop that, Jimmy! The more things change, the more they stay the same. Visit your local Subaru dealer. Hi, I'm Mr. Wallpaper Man of Lieberman Interiors. Back with incredible news. All my in-stock wall coverings are now 40 to 50 percent off the book price. They're our most popular wall coverings, and you can take them home today. Or, if you've already found a favorite book pattern, I'll order it for you at up to 33% off. I have two locations to serve you, Richfield and St. Louis Park. Now, with prices like these, why go anywhere else? Last time I was with a Bronco, too, I made two predictions. Number one, the Vikings would beat New Orleans. And number two, it'd be a lot of snow. Well, here's another prediction. More snow. But if you have a Bronco 2, more fun. So why not buy this beautiful Bronco 2 right now at only $229 a month, no payments to June of 1988. Hey, enjoy the snow. So for the lowest payments ever, call Southdale Ford Eagle right now at 835-5555. You're watching KSTP-TV, Minnesota's News Channel 5. Live from Minnesota's News Channel, KSTP Channel 5, Mike Binkley, Karen Falloon, and Mark Stevens bring you the Eyewitness News Update. Good evening, everyone. Twin City stores tonight are reporting a run on pizza, pop, and party mix, which can mean only one thing. Kickoff of the Super Bowl isn't far away. A disappointment over the Vikings not making it is wearing down, and tomorrow, many of us will be perched in front of the TV. You can imagine the excitement in Washington where the mob of shopping carts made it as hard to get through the checkout as it is to get through the Broncos' offensive line. And remember this souvenir stands at every corner? In San Diego, where the game will be played, scalpers are finding buyers willing to pay a bundle. What are you asking for? We're asking you 400 each. Four each. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not too bad for a corner, but if they were higher, they'd be a lot better. 
Meanwhile, Denver, Colorado, and Washington, D.C. aren't the only towns crazy over these teams. Take, for example, Washington, yeah, Iowa, and Denver, yeah. Iowa. Oh, there's excitement. We're excited about the team, about our chances this weekend. We can't wait. I guess since I do have this Washington hat on, and I'm from Washington, I probably ought to pick the Washington Redskins. Washington's the only way, right? Washington's going to take her. We'll see tomorrow. An estimated 140 million people in more than 60 countries will watch the game on TV. And you can see it, of course, here on Channel 5. The day begins at 2 o'clock with the road to the Super Bowl. The pregame game show starts an hour later, and then kickoff is scheduled for 518. Super Bowl Sunday may turn out to be Strike Sunday for some 6,500 workers at Honeywell. A group of union and management leaders got together tonight at the Regency Plaza Hotel to figure out whether a threatened strike vote would be taken tomorrow. The workers want better job security. The last time they went on strike was 1967. We'll have more on this, of course, tomorrow. The labor rift between Northwest Airlines and its flight attendants was heightened today with an open invitation. The airlines began accepting applications for new flight attendants, insisting that its recruiting drive is not related to a threatened strike by flight attendants. A couple hundred people filled out application forms at the airport today. Monday, union leaders say they'll open a strike headquarters in the Twin Cities. The earliest the union could call a strike is February 26th, and not without first getting two-thirds approval from its members. Arizona's Governor Evan Meekham is serving notice to his state that he will fight to keep his job despite the fact that he faces impeachment. Meekin's decision not to resign was revealed in a letter to Arizona's state secretary, which she opened tonight. Meekin wrote he intends to campaign in a recall election to win his job for good. I have broken no laws. I have worked diligently to fulfill my promises to the voters when I asked them to elect me, and no accuser yet has been able to come forth with any proof to back any accusations otherwise. Now, Meekham has also been indicted on fraud and perjury charges for allegedly concealing a campaign loan. White House officials have been told that developments in the investigation of Attorney General Edwin Meese are very serious. The Washington Post reports that the investigation centers on a 1985 memo to Meese, which outlined a plan to bribe a top Israeli official over a proposed Iraqi pipeline project. An American pilot who was shot down over Nicaragua last month and charged with crimes against the Nicaraguan government yesterday is a free man tonight. 58-year-old James Denby was accused of aiding Contra rebels. They told me to go home and see the Super Bowl. Denby faced up to 30 years in prison. Tonight, the Minnesota Supreme Court is publicly reprimanding former Scott County attorney Kathleen Morris. This comes months after it filed its actual court order criticizing Morris for her role in dozens of alleged child sex abuse cases. The justices filed the official reprimand last November, but it wasn't released to the public until today. The criticism stems from Morris's actions in 1984 when she filed dozens of charges against adults in Jordan, Minnesota, alleging child sexual abuse. But only one of those charges led to a conviction. The future is uncertain for Miss Minnesota USA tonight. Sue Bolich was arrested for shoplifting at Southdale Mall in Edina. She's accused of taking a swimsuit, silk scarves, and hair pieces. She's scheduled for a court appearance next month. Tonight, dozens of metro area parents and their children are grateful that a bus accident didn't lead to more serious injuries. The bus was taking students from the Ski Jammer Ski School to a weekly outing on the slopes. As it headed south on County Road 15, the bus collided with an ambulance that turned onto the highway. The ambulance was scrambling to a two-car collision in which people had been injured. Up to 50 junior high school-aged children were aboard that bus. Our bus didn't see the ambulance, and the ambulance didn't see the bus, and we tried to avoid it, and we hit a post, and then we hit them, and we went into a ditch. It was really scary. A lot of people were screaming. It was really scary. The bus driver, 11 children, and the three-member ambulance crew were taken to the St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center. All were treated for minor injuries and released. State Patrol officials say the dense fog was definitely a contributing factor to that accident, as well as many others. Two serious accidents were reported in Dakota County. In one, a car collided with a train. The dense fog spread not only through the Twin Cities, but much of Minnesota, making any kind of traveling difficult. Coming up, Karen Falloon will tell us how much of that fog has disappeared and what kind of weather lies ahead for Super Bowl Sunday. Actually, Mike, the dense fog is back, and the fog and drizzle tonight will give way to light snow and colder temperatures tomorrow. I'll have the details. Mike? All right, and when we come back, we'll tell you about elaborate plans that could make ski jumping in Bloomington a national tourist attraction. 
And a winter carnival parade draws thousands to St. Paul. Stay with us. My old buddy Cecil here and me made a little bet. Didn't we, Cecil? I said there wasn't a better herbicide out there for soybeans than commence. But you didn't believe me, did you? <laughs> I also bet him that it killed velvet leaves, pigweed, and all kinds of grasses. Even foxtail. Isn't that right, Goldilocks? Well, it's not so bad. You look like a real ladies' man now, Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Cutlass comes through for you again with up to $1,550. Calais. Savings, plus special savings. frozen seafood entrees. At Booth, we're so fussy about fish, we catch our own. We haven't missed a morning in seven years. She wants this more than anything in the world. At 3M, we know that dreams, like ideas, won't live without the support of others. So as you watch the 1988 Olympic Games, remember nobody got there alone. 3 in supporting the dream. A group of Minnesota lobbyists, angry at the way the blind are treated on airlines, are in Washington tonight. They left from Twin Cities International Airport earlier tonight. The citizens. meter ski jump proposed for Bloomington. Catherine Smith tells us the project is the dream of a small group of ski enthusiasts, a dream that may come true very soon. Once upon a time in Minnesota, ski jumping was a very popular sport. There were ski jumps in Bloomington you could see for miles. Back in the 50s and 40s, uh, we had just virtually hundreds of kids at every ski jumping location around the country, and uh, now that's not the case. There's been a lot of other sports that have distracted from it, the, the hockey programs, the um, video arcades and a lot of other things. So. Today, those jumps in Bloomington look ancient. One has been torn down. But ski jumping enthusiasts say their sport is making a comeback in the Midwest. This new facility could help make all the difference. The Minnesota Holman Colon is in the planning stages. Named after the famous jump in Norway, it would boast a 70-meter Olympic caliber hill. The six and a half million dollar project would be a tourist attraction a year-round training facility, and would give Minnesota athletes a chance to get back in the race. The young kids that are in the program today have no place to go once they get up to the ages of 13, 14, 15 years old. After they've jumped on a 40 or 50 meter jump, then the only thing that they can do is go off to, like you say, Calgary, Lake Placid, Steamboat Springs, to continue their training. They don't do that. They find something else to do. Former U.S. ski jump team member Jeff Denny says a new hill would also put Minnesota back on the map. Back in 1976, we had six Minnesotans out of seven on the Olympic ski jumping team. This year we have none, and that it really says a lot about uh, what we need right now is uh, facilities that will train Olympians from here in Minnesota. Organizers of this project say they're still putting the financing together, but they expect that by March they'll be announcing construction plans for Minnesota's newest world-class sporting facility. For the Eyewitness News Update, I'm Catherine Smith in Bloomington. One of the winter carnival bands had people jumping tonight. The young and the young at heart were cutting the rug over at the Landmark Center. To the whirls and swirls of the music, everyone on hand found enough room to make their way across the dance floor. Now, earlier this afternoon, thousands gathered in St. Paul for the annual Winter Carnival Grand Day Parade. For 102 years, various groups, floats, and celebrities have moved through the streets. The warmer winter weather today made the fun outside a lot more bearable. 
This was the competition that caught many an eye this afternoon, ice carving. This man came all the way from the Chicago area to compete. The finished wildlife scene is a testimonial to the real potential of an ice cube. Just ahead on the update, Fi's first forecast for a Sunday full of winter carnival events. And later, we'll go on the road again with Jason Davis to meet some newcomers to the fun of ice skating. The biggest thing is to see the smile of joy, the universal language, the smile come out on their faces and to see how they're enjoying this experience. Honey, I picked up the new car. I only spent about 12 grand, and you'll love what I got. You said I'd love the last car, and I never saw it again. Just come and tell me what you think. It's gorgeous, Sam, but I'll never get to drive it. You're right. Because the red one's yours. For less than the average price of a new car, Sam Smith got two new Hyundai Excels and some nice extras. One thing. I know. You want the silver one. Hyundai. Cars that make sense. In the struggle against rootworms, don't you lose sight of what you're really after. Strong, healthy corn. Corn you know will yield just by looking. Year after year, Thymid Insecticide grows fields like these for less money per acre than anyone. And isn't that what you're really after? Thymid. Available from your Cyanamid Aquacenter dealer. Hobbit Travel's special cruise prices. Call Hobbit Travel at 645-3988. If you thought the fog was bad this morning, take a look outside now. It's back, huh? Yeah, it's back. As heavy as ever. <laughs> yes, it's just as bad as it was this morning. Visibility right now an eighth of a mile, and overnight it could be near zero at times over wow. parts of the Twin Cities. So if you're headed outside for any reason, do be careful. Well, now, we have a rather chilly Super Bowl day coming up here in the upper Midwest, but in San Diego, it's going to be partly cloudy. The temperature will be near 60 degrees at game time, and the winds will be out of the southwest at 10 miles an hour. Just a perfect day for football. Elsewhere, making the weather headlines, there was some snow over the Colorado Rockies. In fact, some of the Colorado ski resorts now reporting some new snow. Snowmass had 12 inches of new snow today, and now that's tapered off. As the low pressure moved through the central plains, Winds were rather strong across the central plains, and winds gusted to 53 miles an hour at Kansas City, but those very warm, moist air brought some milder temperatures to the upper Midwest and 51 degrees at Milwaukee this afternoon for a record high, and that was a record that stood on the books almost 100 years. Well, now, the low pressure started out in northeastern Nebraska, and it's taken all day long and part of the night, but it's now situated over southeastern Minnesota. And there is fog and drizzle with an eighth of a mile visibility in the Twin Cities at Mankato, Rochester, Redwood Falls as you head back toward the northwest. Freezing rain, a problem from Alexandria to Duluth. Snow has started falling across northwestern Minnesota and back toward North Dakota. Very windy conditions causing blowing snow in eastern North Dakota. And that may spread into northwestern Minnesota. And this snow is sagging southward with the colder air. And we might see some snowfall toward morning here in the Twin Cities. Right now, though, we have fog with an eighth of a mile visibility. The temperature is still 35 degrees. The dew point 30, the relative humidity 82 percent. Winds are calm, the pressure rising. Our high today, 36 degrees after a low this morning of 29, and we've had no precipitation. For tonight, we are looking at the fog and drizzle and patchy freezing drizzle possible, and that will continue throughout much of the night. In fact, our temperature overnight will be around 30 degrees. 28 to 32 winds will be out of the northeast. Those winds will shift to the northwest tomorrow, though, and by tomorrow morning there will be some light snow in the metro area, 28 degrees, and the rest of the day will be windy and turning colder with the light snow, falling temperatures into the lower 20s, and the winds will continue rather gusty. Skies will become partly cloudy, though, a little bit later on in the afternoon. Right now on the radar, though, we're not picking up much over Minnesota, although the drizzle is there, just too light to pick up. The freezing rain is now reported in northwestern Wisconsin, and we're just picking up a small shower southwest of Hayward, Wisconsin, moving to the northeast. Advisories are out over central Minnesota for freezing rain, and on the north side of this advisory, 
for snow as well, blowing snow in the Dakotas. And these advisories have now, just now, been extended into northwestern Wisconsin. For tomorrow, that low pressure should be over northeastern Wisconsin. We'll be in the colder air behind it. Still a few clouds hanging on and some light snow and flurries, but as this system moves away, high pressure will build in and winds out of the northwest, bringing that colder air into the upper Midwest. Northern Minnesota will see snow and blowing snow with those temperatures single digits, falling into the single digits. Southern half of the state, windy and colder, flurries possible and in the teens. And then western Wisconsin will have a high around 20 degrees, and that will continue falling with light snow still a possibility. For the next couple of days, it looks like winter is making a return. Partly cloudy skies into the middle of the week, but the nighttime temperatures will be below zero with daytime highs, single digits and teens. And the clouds will be increasing again on Thursday. Okay, Karen. Coming up next in sports, the Gopher basketball team has its Big Ten winning streak stopped at one. And the hockey Gophers didn't need overtime to beat Colorado tonight. Mark Stevens has it all next on Eyewitness Sports. Lincoln Mercury announces up to $1,000 customer cash on Mercury Cougar and Sable. Now save $1,610 on Mercury Sable with a popular equipment package and customer cash. Save $1,551 on Mercury Cougar with a popular equipment package and customer cash. Or get $500 customer cash on Mercury Tracer. But hurry, customer cash is a limited offer on the shapes you want to be in. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. This Winter Games memory is brought to you by Champion Battery. Meet Bob Fitzgerald, Minneapolis speed skater, national champion, and a member of the U.S. Olympic team in both 1948 and 1952. I felt that truly I was an ambassador, and I, I took it seriously. In the 48 games at San Moritz, Fitzgerald and Ken Bartholomew of Minneapolis are headliners as they tie for the silver medal in the men's 500-meter speed skating event. If you gotta go, if you gotta go because a life's on the line, you better have it. Champion Battery. If you gotta go when it's 20 below, you better have it. Champion Battery. If you gotta go because the stork's arriving, you better have it. Champion. 700 cold cranking amps. Pound for pound the most powerful battery you can buy. Guaranteed to start your car. Champion. You better have it. Save $20 at Montgomery Ward Auto Express. Our New Year's sale at Sun Valley was so successful, we're going to do it one more time. For four days only, we're repeating the year's lowest prices on everything in our showrooms. You'll save up to 50% on water beds, bedroom furniture, waveless mattresses, soma beds, comforter, sheets, everything. These are absolutely the lowest prices of the year. Yours with no money down and no payments till May. So treat yourself to the best in beds right now at the lowest prices of the year. Through Monday only at Sun Valley Water Beds. North Star is just underway out on the West Coast. This is maybe one they should win. Let's hope, I guess. It's not really a thriller. You know, Hollywood is known for those star-studded, big-budget, Academy Award-winning motion pictures. But remember, out in that place, they also make those cheapy, no-name flicks, kind of like the North Star's L.A. Kings hockey game tonight. These aren't two of the best that are going at it. They're definitely not the Robert Redfords of the NHL. More like Dom DeLuise. A little over two minutes into this game. Kings get on the scoreboard. Jimmy Carson gets the tip, gets it past Donnie Beaupre. one nothing L.A. So far, that's all the scoring in the fabulous form. Still in the first, L.A. leads the North Stars to one to nothing. Also on the NHL scoreboard tonight, Detroit and Toronto skated to a five-all tie. The Blues win their fifth in a row tonight over Quebec. Pittsburgh, four, and Chicago, two. Same thing, Rangers over Boston. Philadelphia by a goal over Winnipeg. Montreal beat the Islanders, 6-2. Edmonton, five, and Hartford, two. And Calgary is a one-goal winner over Vancouver. Well, that's a little more like it for the Gopher hockey team tonight. After going to overtime with Patsy Colorado College yesterday, the Gophers buried CC in the first period tonight, scoring seven times in the first period en route to an 11-2 route. First period. We're all tied at one till Paul Broughton organizes the Gopher power play. Gets the goal right there. 2-1. Gophers had the lead. Now, it was also tied at two. CC's on the power play here, but watch Broughton. Takes it away, goes in, shorthanded, beautiful goal. Gophers ahead for good at 3-2. to They scored four more times in the first. J.K. Tier, his first of two in that fabulous first. Gophers complete a weekend sweep with Colorado College. Tonight's final at Mariucci was 11-2. Well, the Gopher basketballers' Big Ten winning streak is over after it reached one. 
Rough night for the Gophers in Iowa City. They lose their 22nd in 23 Big Ten tries. 76-51 tonight to Iowa. Gophers actually led it through the first 10 minutes. Willie Burton, the bucket here, he had 16. Gophers led it by three, but then the Hawkeyes unloaded. B.J. Armstrong from long range. All 18 of his points came on three-pointers. And Iowa just blew it open in the second half. Roy Marble blows in for the jam. Gophers slipped to one and six in Big Ten play, seven and ten overall. 76-51 losers tonight. Well, the nation's longest college basketball winning streak was stopped today by a team who just a week ago saw their own home court winning streak stopped at 29. Indiana upset second-ranked Purdue today, today, thus stopping the Boilermakers' winning streak of 16. Indiana took a 21-point lead early in the second half. Dean Garrett had a lot to do with it. He had 31 today, but Purdue wasn't through. They're number two, and they worked hard to get the lead late in the game. Mel McCants puts the Boilermakers ahead by one with that bucket, but with just seconds left, Indiana goes down low to Garrett. He'll get the turnaround. The Hoosiers make Bobby Knight a little more pleasant to be around. Yeah, right. Final 82-79. Top-ranked team in the country had some fun down in Tucson, Arizona. Today, Arizona breezed past Illinois. Steve Kerr from long distance there. Cats on top by one. Tom Tolbert pumped in 20 for the Wildcats. They go on to defeat the Fighting Illini 78-70. Wildcats become the first college basketball team this season to win 20 games. Also on the college basketball scoreboard today, North Carolina survives a scare against Georgia Tech. At the half, number seven BYU is the leader, and for the second time this week, Oklahoma does it to Iowa State. Now keep this in mind when you wake up tomorrow morning. It will officially be Super Sunday. Doesn't that just send chills up and down your spine? Both the Redskins and Broncos completed their final preparations this afternoon in top secret. Do you ever wonder why they do that? These are some pictures from yesterday's workout. Some real pretty heavy stuff, huh? <laughs> Ace left topo, double ace 36 OT on one on one. Ready? Closing practices has become the norm nowadays. Broncos coach Dan Reeves. That's not something I reason. worry about. There are a lot of people standing over watching uh, practice across the street uh, because they have a pretty good view, you know, into our practice facility. And, you know, a couple of them look like Joe Gibbs brothers. I don't know where he has brothers or not. I don't know. But it really doesn't make a difference. We ran a couple of trick plays just to throw them off. But we didn't change jerseys or anything like that. ABC's Super Coverage begins tomorrow at 3 p.m. here on Channel 5. The official Super Bowl kickoff is at 5.18. So order the pizza about oh, 4.45. Former Purple People leader Alan Page is one of seven finalists for this year's pro football inductions. The former Viking defensive tackle could join Fran Tarkenton as the only Vikings in the hall. At least four of the seven nominees will be inducted. That announcement will come on Tuesday. It would be nice to see number 88 there in the hall. All right, don't go away. When we come back, we'll share some very special moments with you as handicapped children discover ice skating for the very first time. If you grow soybeans, try Command from FMC, the only grass herbicide that also controls broadleaf weeds. At one and a half to two pints per acre, Command controls grasses and broadleaf weeds without damaging the crop. And Command controls weeds all season long. Because... Another 30 seconds of common sense. Shop around, and you'll find that the average price of a used car today is almost $6,000. Lots of money for a car you know nothing about from someone you'll probably never see again. Especially when you can buy this brand new Hyundai Excel for just $56.50 or this four-door for just $62.50. Ever think you'd see the day when a new car would become a sensible alternative to a used car? Think about it. Test drive an Excel at your Twin Cities Hyundai dealer. We sell cars that make sense. I'm so happy today. What you need from a radio station changes depending on when it is, where you're headed, or what you're doing. And through the different times of your day, and the different places you have to stay, there's one radio station to turn to every step of the way. KS95 FM, the number one music station under the sun, is 95 and sunny all day long. Being the least expensive car in the USA wasn't enough for Hugo. They went one step further. The new 12-month or 12,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty. They'll pay everything from repair to maintenance. They'll even pay for your oil change. All you pay for is gas. 
with $99 a month with no payments to June of 88, right here at Southdale Ford Hugo, we'll fill in the gas for a year. So for the lowest payments ever, call Southdale Ford Hugo, 835-5555. Every Wednesday morning at this time of the year, the sports arena in St. Cloud is closed to the public. It's a special time for special people. And Jason Davis went on the road again one Wednesday to see why. Some of them can barely walk. Some are blind. They are all handicapped in one way or another. And without exception, they all love Wednesday mornings. Bev Johansson is in charge of the program. We've got kids that have never skated before that walk out of here after eight weeks independently skating. We've got kids that are in wheelchairs smiling as they're moving around on the ice with the wind blowing their hair and the cool air. Um, it's just a wonderful program and the kids really like it. The men of VFW Post 428 pay the bill. They also show up to lend a helping hand. Teachers and parents help out and everyone has a ball. That's what makes it worthwhile when you see the big smiles, when you see the successes of the kids taking their first steps or making their first stop or their first spin. That, you know, that really is what, what's rewarding for all of us about the whole program. Bill Franti is a retired hockey coach. Every Wednesday, he shows up at the arena. But when you see youngsters like Conrad, who a year ago was uh, having a tough time standing up on ice, and see, he, he's made a remarkable advancement. That's, that's, in my book, that's really some accomplishment, you know. 